So this uh, webinar um, will uh, last uh, for the next hour, and uh, we'll start with uh, a few slides about principles and applications of adaptive optics, and then we'll go to uh, the first live demo with uh, Xavier Lebec, our CSO. Um, this should take us uh, about 15 minutes, and then we'll take a first session of Q&A. Um, and Guillaume will then uh, close the webinar with a second live demo, um, followed by a Q&A also. As far as the questions, you, you will find in the little uh, panel from GoToWebinar uh, a link to, um, to a question pad. So feel free to uh, send your questions at any time. Uh, we'll make sure you get an answer, whether we get the opportunity to uh, air it uh, during the Q&A session or not. Um, we will conclude the webinar with a few of the takeaways. And um, as another form of takeaway in the handouts, uh, you should find two application notes that Xavier uh, and Guillaume will mention throughout the, the, the webinar but that will give you more insights on um, two different topics. More on that later. So um, this webinar is hosted uh, by Imagine Optic. We're a um, medium-sized company based in France and uh, with an arm in the US uh, and distributors around the world. We specialize in wavefront sensors, deformable mirrors, and software. Uh, we do a lot of uh, custom and uh, dedicated uh, systems, and we also provide the various services regarding our core expertise. So today we're together to talk about uh, adaptive optics, and I'm uh, going to give the floor to Debbie to introduce you or just give you a quick overview of uh, the main concepts. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so, um, to do adaptive optics, uh, you need uh, three main elements. Uh, the first one is um, the wavefront sensor, and you need to measure uh, the aberration in order to be able to correct. And uh, once uh, the um, uh, the web, uh, the web from this measured, uh, thanks to the software, you can calculate uh, the command to be applied to the mirror in order to correct for the, those aberrations. So at the end, uh, uh, the incoming web from can be aberrated, and but thanks to this uh, correction, uh, once uh, the closed loop is on. Uh, you have at the output of this system a perfect uh, and corrected wavefront that can be focalized or uh, that can be used for to produce a, a perfect uh, image. So let's have a look now on uh, uh, a few uh, examples. Um, imagine optic has uh, worked uh, in this field, in, in this field of, of um, adaptive optics for uh, 20 years now. So we have made main, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things uh, with different fields. And uh, especially the, one of the first was uh, retinal imaging. And, and <clears throat> we, we do that with our uh, sister company uh, called Imaginize. And here uh, you can see um, on the left uh, what is the best, what is the state of the art now in, in uh, retinal imaging um, with a scanning, uh, scanning light of thermoscope, scanning laser of thermoscope. And uh, if you do a zoom uh, in, in this part, you can see that uh, it's quite blurred. And uh, once you use adaptive optics, uh, you can have a much, much um, a better view of, of small details. And even if you zoom on this, you can see individual photoreceptors. 
So thanks to adaptive optics, you can have a microscope for the retina. Uh, second application, uh, still in uh, bioscience, is uh, microscopy. In this, uh, in this field, what we want, we mainly want to create aberrations that are induced by the sample itself. And once you uh, couple, integrate adaptive optics to a, a, a specific uh, microscopy uh, imaging system, here, a uh, super resolution microscope, you can dramatically uh, improve the signal to noise ratio and you, you can you can go from this kind of image to this kind of image and you can have a gain of factor of five or factor of six in, in a, a, a signal to noise ratio and at the end you, you can have a perfect image uh, with a perfect uh, optical resolution uh, in, in microscopy. Another e example in microscopy is now with multiphoton confocal on light sheet microscopy. Here uh, uh, you can see on the left part uh, um, difference between uh, with and without um, adaptive optics and once again, uh, you, you, you can see uh, the, the improvement in, in uh, signal to noise ratio and then in, uh, in contrast and uh, uh, spatial resolution given by uh, uh, the microscope. Here uh, on the left part, it's uh, uh, an, uh, an example with multi-photon and, and two-photon microscopy. And on, on the right part, it's an example of uh, light sheet microscopy where uh, we can go very, very deep into the sample. Here, uh, we, we can, uh, those images, images was uh, made at more than 50 micron depths into the sample. And uh, you can see that um, uh, details and, and, and are much, uh, much better on the left, on the right part of the image. Of, uh, and and um, uh, the improvement in, uh, in, in resolution is more than a factor of three. I will give the, the microphone to uh, Guillaume for uh, him to present uh, other examples. Yeah, uh, the two previous applications where I was to where I, um, describe application where the image contrast, the image quality is increased thanks to adaptive optics. But adaptive optics uh, allows also to remove aberration for high ultra intense laser. You have here a picture of the, 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 um, the room where two 10 petawatt laser is installed in Romania. Each of these laser has inside three adaptive optics system. And what is important in this one is the last stage of the deformable mirrors and wireframe sensor because they want to focus the light as best as possible, which means that we have to remove all the aberrations coming from the laser chain, misalignment, mirror defects, and thermal effects. And as you see, if you add adaptive optics at the end of the uh, laser, you can Rich diffraction limited spot and then very high fluence on the sample. Uh, they reach uh, a few months ago 10 to the power of 22 joule a watt per centimeter square, which is a huge uh, illumination on the sample. And this is allowed by adaptive. Uh, the last application we wanted to discuss and to talk to you is maybe the most famous one this is astronomy. Here, I choose what I think is the best adaptive optic solution for astronomy. Uh, although the three previous applications describe systems where our products were involved, here it is a very specific system. But as you see, it is quite impressive because, in fact, uh, the Galaxy adaptive optic system is installed at the focal plane of one of the four ESO very large telescopes in China. 
and it is a secondary mirror that is um, adaptive uh, that, that can be driven. Uh, we have more than 1,100 actuators on this mirror, and uh, because they don't have bright stars around the object they want to see, they use laser guard stars. And before laser guard stars, we four wavefront sensor. And as you see uh, on the right part of this slide, uh, the gain in the image is huge with adaptive optics. Uh, of course, here the application is to remove the effect of air turbulence uh, in, uh, in the atmosphere. Um, compared to an image taken by Hubble, as you see, uh, thanks to adaptive optics, the image is even better than the best image required by Hubble on this planet. So it shows that this technology allows to do things we are, which are very, very nice. Um, let's enter only one slide in the main equation that drive an adaptive optic system. Uh, I try to simplify as much as possible this. Uh, let me um, introduce all the terms that are here written in this equation. So we have first the common at the depth i, so this is the mirror previous position. We are allowed to calculate the common for step i plus one. So this is a mirror new position. This can be calculated because we measure the wavefront and because we have targets. So let's focus a bit about this target. If you see this equation is a measurement is equal to the target, that means the wavefront that will be measured by the wavefront sensor the mirror won't move. But if the measured wavefront is different than the target, that means you have narrow, this law allows the mirror to move. So I have here a fifth parameter, which is very important, this is the gain. Remember that adaptive optics is a closed loop system, and as all uh, closed loop system is driven by gain, if the gain is one, you apply directly the measurement to the mirror, but this Situation may be dangerous for you because it may create instabilities in the loop. Usually, this gain is adjusted between 0.3 between uh, up to 0.6 in very fast adaptive optics uh, system for atmosphere and for astronauts. There is also another parameter which is very important. This is a common matrix here. This common matrix allows changing a wavefront to a common. So this is a rectangular matrix. Uh, we'll see Xavier uh, acquire a, what we call an interaction matrix, which is the inverse of this matrix, uh, because this matrix can be acquired directly, but it's, it's obtained by a calibration of an adaptive optics uh, system. Mm -hmm. And the last uh, important thing in this equation is a sign. You see it, it's minus sign here, because all of this is made to correct reference and not to amplify. So we'll switch to the setup one now, and Xavier will present you in detail this sketch. Yes, um, let's have a look on, on the bench itself. So it's a quite simple uh, optical, adaptive optic uh, system. Um, we, we, we do have a, a saw that is a, a single mode fiber with a, a diode laser. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the light from the source is then um, collimated on, uh, <clears throat> on the um, deformable mirror and the light is coming back and is coming back in two different pathways. One pathway through the beam splitter is uh, the light is collimated and tend to the wavefront sensor. And the other pathway is a, a pathway in order to uh, uh, see and, uh, the, the, focal, the focal spot given by the, this uh, uh, optical system. So <clears throat> the spot is imaged on the far field camera thanks to a microscope. One thing here is uh, that uh, the wavefront measurement is uh, the 
system is away from this measure. And then, thanks to this measurement, the software will uh, calculate the command, and this command will be sent uh, to the deformable mirror in order to correct for the average. And the Farfield camera will give you um, and will give us uh, the result of this correction. And if the correction is perfect, we will have at the end a perfect uh, array. Uh, but perfect diffraction uh, limited spot. There are um, uh, several things um, and several parameters uh, to, to get a, a good adaptive optical system. Uh, first, uh, first of all, uh, and, and the master here in, in this is uh, the waveform sensor. So you have to measure um, perfectly well the, the waveform in order to have a perfect uh, correction. Uh, the linearity and, and hysteresis of the of the deformable murmur is a key point uh, to, to get uh, to get a good uh, correction and fast correction. Uh, for sure, uh, the adaptive optics software is it, a, a, a very important uh, parameter, and, and you need to have a good uh, a good software. And uh, the last but not the least uh, parameter is the quality of the optical conjugation between the deformable mirror and the waveform sensor. This optical conjugation has to be as good as possible in order to have a very stable and very efficient uh, adaptive optics logo. Okay, let's have a look now on the, on the bench itself. And uh, I will show you uh, the bench. So, here, you do have um, uh, the uh, single mode fiber, so the light is diverging. This lens uh, is collimating, uh, collimating the, the beam on the deformable mirror that is here. The light is coming back, this, and you have here the two, uh, the two um, pathway. So this pathway with the far field camera and the, the microscope objective in order to to uh, image uh, the focal spot on the on the CCD of this uh, camera, and the other pathway um, uh, for uh, wavefront measurement with uh, the wavefront sensor here, and uh, a, a lens uh, to collimate uh, the beam on the wavefront. Okay, so now. We will uh, we will do uh, the steps uh, and the different steps uh, to get uh, uh, a closed loop uh, working as well as possible. Um, let's have a look on the on the on the software. So here you do have the main uh, windows of the software where you have a, a, an area for the web, for the different mirror, uh, an area for uh, uh, the waveform sensor and the wavefront measurement. And the last area is for the um, uh, far field camera. And here you can see the, uh, the shape of the, uh, of the PSF, of the focal spot. And on this uh, panel, uh, you have a, a zoom of this one. And here, as you can see here, all the uh, actuator uh, without any uh, command, so zero voltages on each actuator. And uh, the wavefront is not so good. Uh, you do have here a wavefront with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, one, 180 uh, nanometer RMS of aberration. And those explain uh, why uh, the, the focal spot is not perfect. So, the first, as, as I uh, told you, adaptive optics need a calibration. And the calibration is what we call the in, inter interaction matrix. And that's the first step where uh, we, are, uh, the, the, we are going to, to push and pull on each actuator in order to have the information on how each actuator change the shape of the mirror. And we will save this, measure this with, with the weapon, with the weapon sensor. 
and, and save it uh, in order to have a uh, good calibration on the map. So let's do it. And here you can see for each actuator, we pushed and we pulled in order to have the influence of each actuator on the membrane of the mirror. And you can see here the position of all the actuator. Uh, and we push and we pull on each. And we do that for all the actuator. So we have nearly finished 80%. And that's it. So, at this step, we do have the information of all uh, all the uh, uh, all the um, actuator. And at this step, we, we we are able to predict what the waveform tensor should see when we put. A, a different uh, a set of voltages on each algorithm. And is what you can see here. Uh, we, we, we do have the information of each influence of all the actuators here. But what, what we want at the end, what we want, we want to correct. So we will, we will measure the wavefront and we want to calculate uh, the uh, um, voltages we have to apply to the deformable mirror in order to correct for that. So at this step, what we get, we get the information on what the wavefront sensor could see when we put a set of voltages on, 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 the, on the deformable mirror. And what we want, we want the inverse. So we will we, 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 we will invert this, this matrix in order to get what we want, that is to say, we enter the wave from the correct, and at the end uh, we, we we do have uh, the voltages we have to apply. And once we do this inversion, uh, we, we can have uh, the eigenmode of this uh, of, of this system. And we, you can see here on this part the eigenmode of the system, and uh, as you can see, uh, the the first eigenmode are a very low uh, uh, spatial frequency uh, uh, polynomial, let's say, because it is what we, we do have here astigmatism. We, we, we have the focus, and uh, we, we do have uh, a trefoil here uh, and a spherical collaboration. And, and so, so we, we do have we do have 50, uh, 52 actuators here. So that means that we have 52 degrees of freedom and 52 eigenmode yeah, in uh, in this uh, in this system. So we do have our uh, interaction matrix. We we have done the inversion. So now we are ready to uh, make a correction. And what I'm going to, to do here, I want to correct all the aberration of the system. So it's what I, I, I will do. I will just ask the, 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 the system and the, the software to correct for the aberration. So here we are measuring. So we are measuring a waveform that is not perfect. We do have a PSF that is not perfect. And now I will close the loop here and now. And you will see here the improvement of the PSF. And at the end of this process, what we do have here, just a perfect disk, a perfect PSF. And we can see now that the wavefront error is uh, uh, 15 nanometers. A 15 nanometer RMS, uh, about uh, lambda over 50, and uh, with this uh, such good uh, optical quality, you do have a, a, a 
virtual uh, uh, perfect uh, PSM. Let's have a look on the parameter. Guillaume told you about the gain just before. And uh, we, 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 we can have different uh, way to, to, make, uh, to make the closed loop. So I've just made the closed loop with a continuous, uh, a continuous closed loop. So each time we are measuring, uh, we are calculating uh, um, uh, a new set of uh, voltages to apply to the deformable mirror in order to correct. But I can have a finite, uh, a finite number of iterations. And let's have only one iteration. That means that we are going to measure, we are going uh, to calculate once uh, uh, the voltage is to apply, and we, we will apply it. And I propose you to apply it with a gain of one. So what that means, all the, all the aberration will be, will be measured and will be applied on the mirror directly once. And it, if we do only one iteration, it, it, it is what we call open loop, because we are not going to remeasure and re, uh, recorrect what uh, the, the last aberration. So let's put zero on all the voltages. You see the PSF is now uh, not, not so good. We are measuring, and uh, here the aberration is about uh, 0.2 uh, nanometer, uh, 0.2 uh, micromet, 200 nanometers RMS. And now I will just do one iteration, so one measurement, one calculation, one application of the of the um, of the voltages, and you will see in one iteration when we measure and correct everything, we do have a perfect wave. What does that mean? That we can reach a perfect, a perfect PSF, a perfect correction in only one iteration. That means that uh, reference sensor measure accurately. The deformable mirror is quite 100% linear, and we don't have any hysteresis on the, on the actuator. So here, with this system and with this calibration, we have something that is what we can say a perfect adaptive optics solution. Of course, once you have a uh, correct for the aberration, you can play with a different mirror to introduce or modify the shape of the mirror. And let's see that now. For example, I can I can add some, some astigmatism or focus. And both astigmatism and focus. And you can see here on the PSF that we do have a perfect astigmatic uh, uh, PSF. But uh, I can introduce, for example, comma, and even with a very small comma, you can see here the PSF, that is a perfect uh, comma. Uh, and with this system, you can see that you can correct for aberration, but you also can generate pure, pure, uh, pure aberration, pure focus, pure astigmatism. Um, I've just shown a way and how and the different step to, uh, to, uh, to get a, a perfect correction. And, uh, and now uh, I'm uh, here to answer your question. Well, thank you very much, Xavier. Uh, so it's time for questions as you have it. Um, and Guillaume is currently uh, looking at the few first few. Yeah, we had some few questions with uh, technical problems in the webinar. Uh, but one of this, this question is interesting, I think. 
Uh, the question uh, is about Squid. Uh, is it possible to do adaptive optics in Squid and uh, for what application? Okay. Um, for sure, uh, you, can, you can do adaptive optics for sphere. Uh, what what you need for that? You need to have a, a, a deformable mirror with a, with a, a coating on it that is uh, compatible with with a, a sphere wavelength, and and for sure you need to have a wavefront sensor that is uh, sensitive to uh, a sphere uh, wavelengths. And um, we, we here we have done uh, the, this. Um, uh, example with uh, with um, a, a, a visible light, uh, 600 and something, 650 uh, nanometers. But uh, we can do exactly the same with uh, with a sphere sphere uh, wavelengths uh, with a sphere uh, adaptive uh, with a sphere uh, wavefront sensor. This mirror can be used for sphere because uh, it's a metallic coating, uh, a silver coating. That is perfect uh, for uh, for um, for sphere wavelength. Thank you. And I have a question from Alexander. How to achieve perfect conjugation deformable mirror to sensor? Yeah. How to? Oh, okay. Good question. <laughs> uh, you, um, as you know, and I, I, I repeat once again. The optical conjugation is very important to get a very efficient, uh, efficient uh, closure. And uh, that's why uh, it, 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 here at Machine Optic, we have decided to, um, uh, to, to have a module in our web, uh, in our uh, web, uh, web front uh, adaptive optic software uh, to help this uh, this calibration uh, and uh, you uh, I can show you maybe uh, can we switch to uh, because I will show you this okay so we we do have here in in, uh, in the setting a, a, a module where you can uh, activate. Uh, the conjugation and what we call the conjugation helper and uh, with this uh, uh, module we will introduce different focus and with the variation of intensity on each micro lens we are able to uh, to say if you are well conjugated and how far from the from the, the, the perfect conjugation we are and so I just apply that so we will have three measurements. Excuse me. Eight. Oh, excuse me. We have a small. Okay. Okay. So maybe that maybe we can skip this part and actually move along where. Uh, quickly advanced into the webinar. Okay. Seem to be working. Alexander, we'll be back to you uh, with correct answers of the this point, which is quite interesting. So maybe we can uh, actually uh, move to set up two. I'm sorry for the additional questions that uh, Anne is pressing us. So Guillaume, uh, maybe uh, you want to describe a bit what's uh, going to be uh, set up to. So, do we start with the slide? Yes, yes. please. So, here you go. Yeah. 
uh, here's a brief, brief description of what you, you see uh, in this setup view. So uh, it's a demonstration of what can be used, um, how adaptive optics can be used for astronomy. Uh, we designed what we call a shallow system, CIAO, uh, which is um, a complete system that includes a deformable mirror, a wavefront sensor. And as you see in the optical pass, uh, this system can be plugged directly at the focal plane of a telescope and the beam passing through pass through uh, mirrors lenses to be to go to the deformable mirror and another lens that creates a new plane a new focal plane for uh, the telescope and of course as the beam is now uh, passing through the deformable mirror we are able to create uh, the aberration coming from the telescope itself and from the uh, you can also see in this design that we have a beam splitter just after the deformable mirror. Uh, it allows us to use a part of the light to enter an optical path up to the wavefront sensor. Uh, this system has been tested in a, on a one meter diameter telescope at peak humidity. Uh, it was last year and we obtained quite, quite good results on it. You'll see this on the next slide. But before that, uh, just a small focus on uh, the small focus on some subsystems here that are implemented uh, in this child system. Um, I need a click. click. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so here we have a 43 actuators PZT. So this is a piezoelectric uh, actuators. Um, this is the formable mirror. It can be run up to 2 kilohertz. We have a fast wavefront sensor with 15 by 15 micro lenses. Why do we have such less micro lens? It's because we want to be fast and we have not a lot of light to measure the wavefront. But 15 by 15 micro lenses is enough to draw a 43 actuator deformable mirror. As a scientific camera, I just use a very simple Bachelor camera. And uh, you see, we use the same software as Xavier uh, presented you just before this wedge. Uh, just a result we obtained on the sky last year. Um, we we try we managed to uh, to do uh, objective optics on Mars. At the, uh, it was in 2017. Before, before that, uh, as you see, the planet Mars was very very far away from the Earth at this time. So the planet itself is less than four arc seconds. But without adaptive optics and with adaptive optics, the gain in the image is, um, is, uh, is obvious. Um, just a small reminder here. What I present today is a very simple adaptive optic system dedicated to astronomy. Uh, it uses only on the shelf components, so it's very, very different than the one we saw as an introduction at the VLT. So let's switch to the camera now in order to see more in detail what, what is this bench. Um, I just grabbed the, the camera here to show you. So here, here is a top view of the system. So we have here uh, a multimode fiber, a flipping mirror, the mirror, the lens, and then the deformable mirror, the beam splitter, another lens, and then we have a secondary focal plane here on the camera. Here is the path to split the beam onto the wavefront sensor. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, during the demo, I will remove the splitting mirror in order to see a star. But here, as you see, we are not at the telescope. So as a telescope, I just use a simple lens here. And as a star, this is only a single mode fiber here. So the lens, the light will be coming out of this fiber, passing through what we call a telescope. You have, a lot, you have to have a lot of imagination here. And then the beam will go into the system and we'll see the result on the camera. I hope it is clear now. So let's just reboot the camera here and switch to the software.
Can you see now my screen? Yeah. Okay, as you see, this is the same software with you. I will use for this uh, small demo. Um, we have here uh, the voltages applied to the mirror. As you see, the architecture of this mirror is quite different than the one before because we have rings here. So we have full piece free actuators. Again, it is a PZT, a piezoelectric diffonal mirror. And here, we can see the image acquired by the Barcelona camera, so it's quite blurred now. Because of why? Why is it blurred? Uh, just a small thing. We use the internal source here. The mirror is split into the internal source. So why is it blurred? Because as you see, the wavefront here it has 112 nanometers per square hour. Where does it come from? It comes from the internal vibration of the bench and mainly coming from the deformable mirror because when it is driven at 100 volt, no one can ensure that it's flat. So I won't do the interaction matrix process because David presented you just before, but I have to quiet this. So what happened if I just close the loop now? So I just have to push here on. As you see, the deformable mirror is now has now changed the voltages. The image on the camera is now a perfect circle. Why is it a circle and not a point? Because, as I said, it's a multi-mode fiber. So what we see here is the core of this fiber. And the residual vibration is now less than five nanometers, which means that on the wavefront sensor, we see a residual vibration value which is very, very, very low. So in that, in the scientific camera, the spot is diffractionally complicated. Um, what I can do now is just very easily switch to the external source. Uh, so just I flip the mirror off. So internal source, we had no aberration and a perfect image of the fiber. External source, as you see now, I pass it through the telescope, get its lens here, but the aberration is now visible. Some aberration is now visible. The plot is not as good as expected. It's just here we are in configuration of when the system is plugged on the telescope, the telescope is not perfect. It's, it has intrinsically some aberration. I just have to click here on in order to remove the aberration coming from the telescope. And here the star is now completely focused without any aberration. We are very close to a perfect star here. Uh, I just want to show you something. If I do the same thing than Xavier before by using the beam shaper, I'm doing this in close loop. Let's say I add 200 nanometers of coma in my target. As you see, the mirror shape chain, a coma is created on the, uh, which is, can be very easily seen on the point spread function on the port field. If I now stop it and try to remove this in open loop, the wavefront is not as it was before. We have now 29 nanometers. And we can see that there is, there is something wrong in the spot. What does it come from? It comes from the fact that this mirror is a piezoelectric mirror. So it's a mirror with a lot of hysteresis and non-linearity. You can't rely on this kind of technology to do open loop application. This is a very important thing. But this mirror is very, very nice if you want to do fast activities for uh, sky application, for astronomy application. So let's do this. If I just reset in open, in closed loop a little bit, okay, the residual is now at seven, six nanometers, and the spot is now perfect. Okay, but in real condition, uh, turbulence occur in this edge, in this kind of application. Here I don't have a telescope, as I said, but I have a heater, which is just a wire that can be uh, just set under the optical path, let's say just before my telescope. The video, you can may see here on the video, um, the heater which is just a simple wire uh, connected to a uh, pole supply. 
as you see now, because of the heater, the punch press function is not as good as expected, and it creates some turbulence in the beam. So I can just move a bit my hand to uh, move air, and you can see that the spot is not. So the idea now, we are very close to uh, uh, adaptive, a real uh, adaptive optics solution for sky, because we have now turbulences. So I will just change a little bit the configuration of the software in order to be as fast as possible. Uh, just a simple and very fast configuration. Let's say it's here. And let's see what happens. So I have now turbulences in my pod. I can just measure the wave front and try to correct it. Now, even if I move my hand, so even if I create turbulence around this heater, the star remains perfectly stable because the foaming mirror is correcting in real time the measurement, the, the aberration coming from the uh, turbulence and measured by the wet In order just to show you, if I switch off the loop, I have now those turbulence in my beam. Again, I can just switch on the loop very easily. But just the thing is now correcting all aberration, the star remains perfectly stable. Here on this demo, uh, I use a very simple laptop. Uh, we are broadcasting from the same laptop. So the frequency is, let's say, only 240 hertz, which is not a uh, very big bit, um, compared to what is needed for astronomy. Uh, the ideal frequency for an adaptive optics closed loop for astronomy is more around 1 kilohertz. But the Mars image we acquired in 2017 was acquired with a very big PC and we reached with a very standard software, wavefront sensor, deformable mirror, uh, 830 hertz of correlation. Uh, so it's very important to have this in mind. Adaptive optics is not as complex as you may imagine. If you grab from the web some elements, you can either design yourself an adaptive optics system or use us in order to help you in designing such a thing. This chow box here is available, so everybody interested in uh, receiving this kind of uh, system will be very happy to collaborate. I just wanted to show you the last thing for this demo because, as I said in the introduction, this is a closed loop. So, from time to time, we have instability. What happened in case of instability? The best way to create instability is to increase the gain. Here the gain was 0.3. Let's see what happens if I try to run this at 0.5. Just play, so measurement, we have perturbation and closing. As you see, it tries to correct and suddenly the mirror says, okay, no. It's, we are uh, we reach the instability and then the loop can't be, uh, can't be run properly. And the only thing you can do in this situation is reset the voltage on the mirror. Of course, change the parameter that create this instability, for instance, by reducing the gain and rerun the process and create one. And you retrieve the perfect star on your scientific camera. Again, I can move my hand here in order to introduce aberration and it does not change anything. If I switch off, I have perturbation in my beam, so the current fret function is not good. So maybe we're going to move to uh, the QA section of this uh, second uh, live demo. So if you'd like to write down any questions, uh, Xavier will be uh, relaying them. Okay, I do have um, a question. Um, what is the magnitude limit of guide star or target for Chao mounting of the PDM telescope? A PDM. Okay, I don't know what's a PDM, but the reference we have on the one meter telescope uh, at Iglumidi 
uh, we are we're able to do a waveform correction with object with a magnitude of five to six. So you have to uh, take your calculator or your ruler, I don't know, in order to see what happened on the telescope with a different diameter. Oh, of course, we can help you to do that. But one meter telescope, we need, uh, we can do adaptive optics on a magnitude five or six. I didn't say that, but the beam splitter, uh, here we use this a 50 by 50 uh, beam splitter. So we send 50% of the light on the waveform sensor and 50% of the light on the camera. We can choose the beam splitter we want, 10, 90, depending on the application. But the best thing to imagine is to use, to use diaphragm mirror because we can, of course, send other infrared to the wavefront sensor and use the visible for your experiment or the reverse. Yeah, I have another question. What are the minimum aberration levels that can be measured with a deformable mirror and the wavefront sensor? And how many Zanica terms can be controlled with a deformable mirror? Okay, this is an interesting question. So the question is relative to the minimum deformation of what can be do with a deformable mirror. As you see here uh, during the demo, the residual wavefront error measured by the wavefront sensor was below five nanometers, which means that the mirror is able to be driven at this level of accuracy, which is far away from the diffraction limit. Um, a second thing that we can say about the number of Zenic. Uh, for a fit, let's say, a, a deformable mirror with 40 up to 50 uh, actuators, uh, driving up to 24 Zaniki is easy. If you need to create uh, more Zaniki, our main advice is to use deformable mirrors with a high number of actuators. Of course, if you have a lot, lot of actuators, you can drive and control a lot, lot of Zaniki for you. Usually, air turbulence uh, create many, many aberrations in the low frequency, which means uh, for one meter diameter telescope, 95% uh, of uh, aberration are coming from only the third order of the of, uh, of Zanke, up to spherical aberration and maybe triple, uh, but uh, higher orders are negligible. I think we have time for uh, one last question, Xavier. Okay, I have one question. Uh, how big is the AO corrected size with Chao and Pit PVD one meter telescope? Uh, it's a question is how big is the Chao system? It is a uh, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters box, roughly. And this is plugged directly on the output port of the telescope itself. And then we provide a C-mount interface in order to mount your own camera, depending on your application and uh, what you want to see. What you have to keep in mind is that if you want to see very um, uh, weak source, uh, let's say for instance, uh, I want to see uh, clouds around the star, for instance, on Fumalaut, which is very famous for that, it's possible to use a star as a laser, as a guide star for the wavefront sensor, and you can uh, in, uh, uh, you can set a very large exposure duration on your scientific camera. You can expose, let's say, 10 seconds, and during these 10 seconds, the adaptive optics system is still running at 800 watts, 800 hertz, in order to provide you the best PSF on the scientific camera. So the scientific camera exposure is completely different than the wavefront sensor exposure. Well, thank you, Guillaume. Um, I think we're going to move on to uh, uh, a summary of what uh, we've done in the webinar, and then I'll have a quick poll for our, our participants. And then uh, if there are still questions and you need to give uh, five, 10 minutes, the time we may uh, take more questions. I just want to make sure that people that are on the schedule get the whole uh, webinar presentation. So, summary of what we've uh, seen today. Um, Sabine and Guillaume presented the, the principles of uh, adaptive optics. 
uh, show, showed uh, many different uh, applications in biomedical imaging, lasers, astronomy, and then moved to uh, two AO setups, when, uh, one with a state-of-the-art precision DM, uh, Miro 52, and the other one with a fast, uh, cost-effective uh, formable mirror. Um, the main challenge of uh, adaptive optics preferred is uh, in these setups are uh, the quality of the components uh, to make sure that measurement is accurate, uh, the mirror is uh, as much as possible flawless, the linearity, the pupil matching, and software controls work well. Um, as far as performance, we showed web from mirrors uh, under 20 nanometers per RMS uh, and speed uh, over uh, So, um, I'll leave you with uh, um, our web from sensor uh, family and I'm going to ask you uh, three quick questions. Uh, and um, so the first one is actually, um, would you like to uh, receive a copy of this uh, webinar presentation? So please take a minute to answer this question, especially if you're interested in getting that presentation. Um, well, thank you very much for yeah. that. I'm going to close it. And we're going to move to uh, another quick question. Would you like to receive more information? How many? Well, thank you. I'm going to close this one. And the uh, last one is, uh, are you actively looking for a solution? Thank you very much. Um, I know there, see there probably a couple of uh, questions, but I'd like to uh, just uh, rapidly uh, close on our presentation. Sorry about the little hiccups. We always get hiccups. But so uh, just to that the imagine optic, uh, adaptive optics solution operates on a, a large variety of wavefront sensors from X ray EUV to square 10 to 1000 hertz with a lambda of 100 the RMS uh, absolute accuracy, uh, deformable mirrors uh, with uh, excellent uh, linearity, and uh, our software. Webtoon, which is kind of a universal platform since it's compatible with most existing face modulators and the form of all mirrors. Uh, let me close with the AO kit, which uh, consists of uh, packing together um, one of our deformable mirror or uh, a different one, um, any SLM and pack it with um, our software's WaveKit and Wave2, or only one of the two, and a wave sensor, and you'll get very versatile uh, objects. So feel free to 
contact us if you want to know more about uh, those offers. Now, maybe, uh, Xavier, we can uh, go back to the questions. There are a couple left, and um, we still have our, all our audience with us, so maybe a couple of questions uh, still waiting. I see that Guillaume is uh, answering actively uh, on the chat. Yeah. But any any questions worth uh, sharing with uh, the audience? And maybe quickly go to back to uh, the last setup if necessary. Well, maybe you can just talk about there was a question uh, of someone very surprised that we, we are able to measure wavefront at one kilohertz. Uh, this is very easy to measure where from at one kilohertz if you have a camera at what we want to hertz. So even if you just provide, for instance, a camera at three times 10 kilohertz, you can just work here at measure optic in order to design a micro lenses array in order to make your camera work from sensor that can be used for measuring web from at 10 kilohertz if needed. Well, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Not really. Okay, well, thank you everyone for being with us this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening. Uh, we're going to go um, through the day with two other sessions, one for the East Coast and one for the West Coast in North America. So I hope uh, you found our program this morning uh, insightful and I uh, wish you well. So, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll see you in September for our next uh, series of webinars. Goodbye.